Hello, hello, and welcome to an art haul video, which I had actually planned for next week. But as luck would have it, it turned up early and I'm not complaining, trust me. Um, in fact, it's a beautiful day today. It's snowing outside, almost completely white, and I'm hoping to get some photos for you too uh, for that. And the sofa that Rob and I ordered about three months ago or two months ago now has arrived today and it's in place and looks very nice. So I've got to decorate the room for Christmas now. Nicer problems to have. But it, at the moment, it's all about this because I wanted to use these things and I thought, well, no, first of all, we're going to have a look at them together. So I haven't opened any of these boxes. I don't know if anything's broken or missing or anything like that. I shall mark it all off later. What I do know is that it's an exciting lot of stuff and over the next months, we're going to explore the uses of all of it. Um, Okay, where to start? I think I might start with the paper because, yeah, that's a little bit boring compared to the other poor paper. This is mixed media paper that I've bought. I can't remember what GSM it is. It's about 180 by the feel of it. I would have thought if I had to guess 150, 180. So quite substantial and we'll put up with apparently wet as well as dry. I'm trying to get out of my sketchbook with a few things because I want to paint some things for the wall in my house. Um, it's been a while since I added anything to our paintings and some of them I've gotten rid of because they're not, they're just not what I want anymore. They were at one point, they're not now. So this comes in massive, massive sheets like you could put on a bed. Um, and I cut off a strip so that we could have a look at it, but it's bright white, smooth, very nice and we might be able to swatch a little bit onto here if we get to that today if this is too long we won't swatch today we will i'll have a, a separate swatching video which i suspect will happen actually um this one is a stillman and burn sketchbook which to be fair because i didn't bother to check i didn't realize it was quite so small it looks like exactly the same as the other paper it was quite expensive actually so I hope it is nice but um, wet and dry media watercolor ink techniques that sort of thing so yeah it's a nice size I suppose um I've just joined an art group actually here where we can all paint together on a Thursday and I'm so excited for tomorrow because yeah I've wanted something like that for some time and that would be perfect to take now where the hell do we start here hang on this is just, it's like Christmas early, I know. It's, yeah, I don't know what's in here, but I have my suspicions, yes I do. Okay, here we have Ecoline liquid watercolors. Um, yellow ochre, that's a replacement for one of mine that ran out um, from making green all the time. And this is an Ecoline white watercolor. So I don't know how I'm going to use this or whether it will work for what I want, but stay tuned. I'll pop those over there because I will have to go through the entire process of checking these off. The art shop here in Germany is brilliant. I've got these from Gerstecker, paid full price then, well, with the discount that they offer. So they're not, they didn't give them to me, but um, yeah, shout out anyway. Good quick service and a beautiful range of stuff. Um, this one is an apricot liquid watercolour. So this adds to my liquid watercolour collection. And we've already got a video on that, so I won't hang about there. I got two yellow ochres because I use a lot of that colour, especially when I put it with indigo to make green. This one is a Pibio Colorex watercolour ink in green gold. So I don't know what colour that is or what it's going to look like. I know it looked like on the computer, but we all know that's not always good. So that is something to explore. I just got one of those and always in a green. I always start with a green because green is one of my favourite colours. And it's a good thing to have. Right, here we have got bags and bags and bags of markers. One looks like if it's, oh no, it's not leaked. It's actually the design. It looked like if it had leaked out there for a bit. Um, okay, what have we got here? We've got some Tombos and some, no, these are Lyra's Aqua Brush Duo. So basically these have a brush tip one end 
and a fine tip the other. I'm using my watercolour markers and markers like this increasingly more and more at the minute and really enjoying it. I've got actually quite a collection. I'm not sure if that's even... No, it's not going to come onto, cal onto camera. I've got a huge tray of them already and I just love them. And I did... An, one of my pictures for the Landscape Art Club this month, which was taken by Hannah. Thank you so much for those inspirational photos. So, Hannah, if you're listening to this, lovely. And um, I painted the one with the sun shining through the trees, almost all markers and just a little bit of water. Uh, yeah, no, what else? Do I, markers and coloured pencil. That's all I used and it was absolutely brilliant. So these markers... I'm using them more and more and finding that I can use them for more and more things. They've got fabulous control, all of these, and whether it's the slightly thicker ones, like this is an, an Albrecht Dura watercolour marker in a green that I'll probably never use, but I've got them all, so why not have the green? Don't want anyone to let, get left out. They're great. These are great. They've got different uses, and yes, yeah, so I'm getting a nice collection of these together. So I can go over there as well. So in that same vein, I have got some of these Faber Castell Gold Faber sketch markers. Same deal, exactly the same. A um, brush tip and a fine tip, and I use the brush tip overwhelmingly more than the fine tip. In fact. With all the ones I've got, which must number nearly 100 now, I don't ever remember using the fine tip on any of them. So, yeah, one careful owner, never used. Um, Faber-Castell sketch marker, olive green, yellowish. Again, I don't know what colours these are. Sand and so forth. Uh, what have we got here? And again, gold Faber, burnt umber and terracotta. The terracotta is a lot lighter than I thought it would be. Let us simply have a look here this is, you know, it's not really true to its lid but then again quite often they're not but i notice this paper absorbs immediately there's no rubbing on that i tend to use my fingers a lot as you probably picked up in my videos so i quite like it when i can do that like if there's a not a coating on the paper but i don't want it to absorb very quickly and that did however you can put things under it to create um barriers and oh my goodness sorry total change of subject you want to see the snow now really coming down uh, so I can create resist techniques with my neo colors and other um, bits and bobs that I've got here so I'll still be able to do that this is a colorless blender for the gold fiber I forgot I'd ordered that so that will be interesting uh, dusty mauve love that color it's a really warm gray sort of that actually might be useful for that I don't want to test too many of these. I mean, if the mood strikes, yes, but at the moment I just want to, you know, get through and let you get on with your day. Dull lime. Dull lime is a really nice tree colour. Dark sepia. You know, the other one was burnt umber, I thought. Yeah, because it's not unlike me to double up. This doesn't look like indigo to me. All right, so yeah, it's quite dark. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. So, yeah. And... This one is a Tombow 76. I've no idea what colour it's called now. have no idea because for some reason they don't put them on the barrels, which is really trying. I'm not going to lie. It'd be nice to be able to just grab it and see. I'm not going to memorise all those numbers. And a warm grey 5. You cannot have warm grey 5, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Get them in all sorts of colours. Um, all sorts of products because for shadows they are unprecedented so they're going to be fabulous oh not through them yet uh, this one is another gold fiber fresh bamboo looks a pretty green this one light hmm. uh, as you can see here these are very very similar so they'll warrant a side trip yeah fresh bamboo is not a color that's probably going to get a lot of use in my world but I'll find a way to showcase it at some point. And this one's light green earth. Now, okay, that feels a bit dry on there, actually. To be honest, I wouldn't buy both of those. It feels like I've doubled up. They look like it in the barrel. On the computer, they were totally different colours. Whereas, as you can see here on the paper, they're so similar, you don't need to buy both. So, yeah, 
And bear that in mind, obviously, when we're buying things on the computer, we generally know that, that what they look like on the screen is not necessarily what they look like. Warm Grey 3, another really useful one. Under the eaves, around windows, anywhere where you need a shadow and you need to get there with a pretty fine tip, these are great. And this one's mahogany and earth green yellowish. Fabulous. So, please with those. Oh. And a Staedtler pigment brush pen in indigo. I have no idea. It's a nice cut. Oh my goodness, that's fine. And it goes over those, obviously, because this is a pigment. That is really, really nice. Very good light fastness store horizontally. Yeah, I store all of mine horizontally. Just if you don't know that, always store your markers horizontally unless they say otherwise. Um, because otherwise they can dry out. And if they do dry out, they're ve yeah, if you can get them going again, that's a miracle. This one is a Sennelier ink brush. Now, somewhere down here, I have a Pentel ink brush. Watch me fumble for 20 minutes and start swearing if I can't get this open. Well, sort of. Right, that doesn't merit some of my better swear words. My father taught me to swear beautifully in four languages, including Latin. He was a sailor. Um, so, yeah, I certainly can give it with the best of them. I haven't used these a lot. I mean to. Um, I've got a brown. Oh, gosh, even found it. This is another Pentel one in a brown. It just strikes me that this is a good way to get colour down quite quickly. And I like the scrubby effect you can get. And especially when you're painting outside your studio somewhere, it's nice to not have to carry everything you own and then have to have water with it as well. So these sorts of things I can see as being quite useful. So I've got a Payne's Grey today and a an olive green and I had a sepia. So, yeah. And, of course, if you get these, you'll notice that this one just while we're talking, has a red ring. When you put them together, the nib isn't pierced. The ink isn't uh, can't get into the ink yet. So you've got to take that out. And when you then screw it back on, you can sometimes feel it pierce the membrane inside. Then the ink will flow. The instructions are on the pack. But just in case that's interesting. Okay, next bag is, gosh, I like that colour. has never felt so much like Christmas in my life. Although I have seen white Christmases before. Sorry, it's, it's, I'll see if I can get some photos. This is a Liquitex acrylic marker. It's a really, really big one. And I don't use them this big as a rule. But I figured I'm going to just see if I can find a home for this and see if I can find a use for it in that home. Um, this is a yellow oxide. So it is a 8 to 15 millimetre. Of course, what that means is they have tips which you can get a finer line with. They're really, even the big ones. And this one is, gosh, let me see. Can I get this off? Because we don't really want the swearing. Some of these are just impossible. You wonder who has packed them, but this one's not too bad. So it's really big. And when I activate it, it you can get quite fine lines. You can get a slightly broader line. As you can see, it's a slight chamfer there on the tip or you can go full on broad strokes with it so I think that might be useful at some point this one again it's a Posca and it's ivory it's also quite large but not quite as big so that's interesting too and this one is an edding acrylic uh, 5 to 10 millimeter it's got more of a slanted tip on this one And again, I've only got one colour in some. I'm, I'm not in love with some of the Liquitex, I'm not going to lie, because they're not a great coverage and they can be shiny and not as opaque as I want them. This is a different sort of tip again. So different brand, different colour. This beige colour is awfully useful in a painting. And the ivory I've got here is sort of much the same sort of colour family because useful for dotting in flowers or covering buildings building colours, anything like that, S rocks, sand, 
anything like that. And when we get to that bit, I'll show you how I use them and then fill in the gaps with coloured pencil. Okay, this is a Colour X marker, Pebio again, and I don't know, I think it's a, it's a relative of this one. This one's olive green and this one that I've bought is green gold. So I, again, forgot that I got this. It's rechargeable, refillable, so that's good. So this is a watercolour ink marker interesting new brand to me never used them before if anybody's ever had any experience with them do let me know but uh, yeah so i'm excited to to use that these are molito ones and most of us know about these they're not this one's a new color zinc yellow i'm normally not a bright person like this bright color person yeah not very bright either trust me oh it's one of those days it's just too much today but when you've got a um, field and there are bright yellow flowers like that rape paddock we bought, I bought this, I'll put this on my shopping list the day we did that video on the canola field because the colours I had weren't big, the, the tips weren't big enough to get over the, the ground as you can probably recall. I shot that in two extras so that you didn't sit there all day because you'd, we'd still be here now if I was still doing it with a 0.7 millimetre tip. So this one is bigger and it's brighter because those flowers really are that bright. And yeah, okay, you can tone things down and we frequently do. We quite often don't paint things as they are. We paint things as we like them to be. But sometimes you just need that pop of bright colour. So that's why this has entered the family circle. Same with this. This one is a different tip. This one was a bullet tip. So it's round. This one is a slanted tip. Let's see if I can match up the leads. Oh, go me. And it's the same bright sort of yellow. So I have the same thing in mind for this is to be able to get those bright pops of colour. Bird's feathers is another thing. And acrylic markers are great because they go over most things. And if everything in the world is lining up in the right direction, you even get opacity, which is good. This one is a twin, a, a Molito twin, two bullet tips. One is a 1.5 mil, the other is four mil. Really useful and I like that color. This is a nice purple. Again, flower colors. I always make sure and every landscape artist should make sure that they have one or two flower colors in their kit. This one is bronze yellow by Liquitex. I hope it's better than the Liquitex I've got. I bought it again thinking that I may have a dud in my other one, so it's always worth getting another. This one is a Solo Goya Aqua Paint marker in a green. So it's actually a brush tip and it's a watercolor marker. That's a really nice muted green. And yeah, you can get a really very fine line or squash it down. It's really quite juicy. I can see that coming in handy for leaves. Okay, moving swiftly on to the bag. Right, and more of the same. A Pebio acrylic marker in this particular green, grey. And I see they give a spare tip, which is helpful because, yeah, things happen to them. Another Liquitex marker in parchment. Again, I like this Nil colour. It's really, really useful for filling in areas. Another one for all twins, same as this other one here. Actually, I've got another in hazelnut brown. This one is poison green and this one was purple violet. So they'll be interesting. And they are acrylic markers. A pink skin pastel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about skin. It's more of a pink to be fair, but the ink might be different. And a purple violet, same as the twin marker, but in a different size tip. One hopes two millimeter. So that's nice. Got a nice selection. This one is a yellow, a mellow mint. Excuse me, not yellow mint, but mellow mint, as you can see from the band there. I'm sorry, I'm dashing through these because I'm mindful of the amount of time and um, yeah we can come back and do it properly uh, at a selection at a time in its time nature nature white um, excuse me nature white natural white 
we got there natural white which is again it's a winter white slightly off white which is useful this one unbleached titanium i've certainly decided to give them another go despite hating the one i had you know there's just not yeah purple violet in four millimeter that sounds worryingly like my twin tip one i think it was doesn't matter i'll use it they're also refillable so i'll have a I can put it into a travel kit if I have too many doubles up, and I do that sometimes. Pibio acrylic marker, again, spare tip. This one is an oriental violet, which is a nice orchid colour, actually, and good for flowers, I think. This one is a Molito Amazoni Amazonas light, so Amazon green in light. I'm pretty sure I've seen that one before, worryingly. The matter live with it hazel this one is edding permanent acrylic hazel and is good for just about everything too so yeah good opacity and really useful okay let us see what we've got here i know what they are i suspect this one here is oh poor little guy's a bit lonely and a bit boring neo color one i've nearly used my other one so for that he is good for um any effects where you want to do a resist and I did use that for the sun in my one of my landscape art club pictures pencils are next what have we got these are watercolor pencils and this one here isn't this one's just a raw sienna Caran dash luminance which I was out of needed to replace these are some watercolor pencils Again, really using those quite a bit at the moment. Had a real go with them this week, actually. Um, I've got, no, nope, those are luminance. Put with some more watercolours in this order. Yes, yes, there are. Even though I've got some of these that are very similar in my um, Derwent Light, uh, Derwent, not Derwent Light Fast, the Derwent Ink Tents. I've got them in other brands as well because these are not quite as intense. And with the ink tents, their one failing is it's hard to tone them down. So for sky colours, for example, the lightest blue in ink tents is still too bright for some of the skies that we get in this part of the world. Um, not all year round, but then I don't want to paint pictures that are all summer and bright blue skies. Sometimes I want just a hint of blue and you can't have it with the ink tents. So I've bought Albrecht Dürer by Faber Castell. Um, and I have a red violet here, an olive gray, earth green, always good to have, love that color. Gr light green, that's not a color I will use, but I will show you how to tone that right down when we get some of those going. Chrome oxide green, that's a different one. Dark indigo, I get a dark indigo in every brand if I possibly can. Purple violet, okay, so red violet and purple violet. So those will add to my collection. Oh, wait a second, nope, that's a different one. That's that lot. Oh, I see, they've got the same barrel with the same gold wrap, so let's hope they were all yes they are all they're all faber castell albrecht dura this one is a Caran dash pablo in green ochre green ochre is my current favorite color you probably haven't seen that because it's in everything i touch um bordeaux red and these are also Caran dash super color too soft and then there's another green ochre because why not different this one's a light green, super color too soft. It's a very, it looks like a sweet mint color actually. Uh, this one's olive brown, super color too. These are all super color too, I think. This one's an olive yellow. Bister, I like that color. And spruce green, that's a bit bit greener than I wanted I prefer this sort of color greens to that that's too bluey but we can turn that down and olive black dark olive they're good too love those two and a nice purple aubergine always a good bet 
Right, so watercolour pencils, so that's good. Then these are probably not quite as exciting. These are some Caran d'Ache and these are all replacements for what I actually needed because I've worn them down to stubs. Starting with green ochre, Caran d'Ache green ochre. If you're putting a Christmas list together, this goes on it twice at least. And so does dark thallocyanine green, brilliant. Um, there's a Payne's grey and I have a moss green a raw umber sepia 50% raw umber 50% warm earth 70% French grey and a castle earth oh they spent, spilled it with a C this time this one's going to get a test no still it's oh, I don't know what it is about castle earth it's dry and gritty. Mm, weird. Because this one here, the sepia 50%, is totally different. It feels so much creamier. Castle Brown must be that sort of pigment. You know you get that sometimes where you just get a pigment. It's just not pleasant. Okay, this little stack here. These are Neo, uh, Neo Pastels. They are Caran d'Ache. And they are Neo Pastels, so they're oil pastels. And I bought the whole colour range because I've enjoyed using them. And I shall enjoy showing you what I do with them in January, I think. January, February, something like that. I'm going to do all three pastels. So soft pastels, which we've got some here. And oil pastels. And also pan pastels. I want to show you what I do with those as well. And I'm going to give each one its own spotlight because they do so much. So we have got the whole range here. And they're really nice colours. I'm not going to keep the boxes with those. How lovely. Different labelling. Some must have been an older one. Gosh, they smell like oil pastels too. It feels like the first day of primary school now where we all got given a box of oil crayons back in the 70s. I've actually still got my sons that they gave him because he was never going to be an artist, unfortunately. Bless him. He is probably a very good lawyer, though. He, I haven't seen him at work. But um, he investigates fraud, so I'm sure he's better at that than he was as an artist. And I've got his art, his pastels... This is one of them from when he started school back 2000. As you can see, it's really, really used. It's fine, I'm using them. They're great, i.e. they last for a long time. So even if you buy some of these things and you don't use them, they're not like milk. They're not going to go off. You can still have them for quite a long time. That's probably not true of things like acrylic paints. Although some of my acrylic paint that I'm using at the moment, the Joe Sonia's brand, I've had since 2000 and... No, I tell a lie. 1997. It's as, they're as old as my son is. Right, so this is all of the Neo Pastel. I had some already and they're brilliant. They really, really are lovely. They're lovely to use. You can blend them, do all sorts of things. And like I said, we will give them their time in the sun. I'm just going to pop them in the oil pastel tray. I had to choose a brand because you can get seriously carried away with this sort of thing. I mean, this, this is bad enough. You can get very carried away with these sorts of things. So I decided that what I was going to do is choose a brand and stick to it as much as possible because... Um, then I could keep a track of what I'm doing. That hasn't happened here because there are a couple of brands here because I'm trying some. But by and large, I chose Caran d'Ache because they're not overly expensive. They work well. They're always reliable, very good quality. And you're going to get get some good results once, you know, if you know what to do with them. You may already be using them and know more about it than I do but if not we shall solve that right okay these are soft pastels and I've got a couple of brands this interesting 
like things to open. I bet this is upside down. Of course it is. Honestly, you couldn't make it up. Okay, that's a Rembrandt brand one. And oh, these colours, I just love them. I love these earthy, muted colours. These are the gallery ones that I've had for a while and I use now. But I didn't have a lot of them because I wasn't sure if I was going to like them, so I didn't buy very many. Then I decided I did like them. And our local art shop was having a sale. So I went and this is the result. Okay, I'm not going to keep the cardboard boxes, but I am going to keep the foam inserts and actually create some sort of storage because stupidly when I bought the first lot, I chucked out the boxes and the storage. I don't want the boxes, but I'm going to keep the foam because I think that could go into a tray of some sort. And then I can see what's going on and then they won't get damaged but I can see them and see what I've got now it goes without saying at this point that you do not have to buy such ridiculous amounts of everything I'm just it's my kink I'm just, I'm not gonna lie it's really bad I have always been the person who needs the full color range of everything and yeah I don't know what to say. Like I said, I wish I felt bad, but I don't. So here we go. These are really nice colors and I'm very pleased with what I've actually bought, which is good considering. Really nice earth tones, beautiful. Quite a lot of nice ones that go with what I have already too. Some of them I feel as though I've doubled up. That one looks exactly the same as that one, for example. I can get that out. Car key, and I bet this one is too. No, I'd be wrong. So those are really similar. And I didn't think I had. I double-checked everything. It was ridiculous. It doesn't matter. I'll still double up with something. Okay. To me, this is like jewellery. And I don't know, even though I don't use a lot of watercolour, um, mainly because I cover it up with other things. I've got all the beautiful super granulating watercolours, but I don't want to use them because I wreck them by putting other stuff over them and you can't tell they were super granulating anymore. And I get frustrated with them and don't use them, which is really stupid. Um, put that there. Oh dear. I've got one box extra, so that means I've got to buy more because now they won't match. Okay, that's it. That's all the boxes. No, it's not. <laughs> There's one more. Oh, this is good. Right. Now I need to buy one more box because they still don't match. So, yeah, I think that's everything. Probably something else. Okay. So, with what I have already, I've got a really nice spread of earth tones. If they're all on camera, I believe they are. I have some Rembrandt ones. I have some Schminke and I have some Sennelier. These are um, gallery, Mangayo gallery handmade and I just love these. I would love to be able to have things like Unison pastels that are made in Britain and you just can't get them in Germany or at least I haven't found them. If anybody knows of a source, I know some of you are here in Germany with me, if you know of a source where you can buy unison pastels, make yourself known in the comments because I'd love to try them. But at the moment, this is what we've got. And buying local, Schminke is a nice German brand. Sennelier is French Rembrandt. Who knows? Ah, Holland. So we've got the whole EU here. Um, I don't even know where these Mungayo ones are made. And they are Korea. Okay, so we're all over the place. It doesn't matter. They're very nice pastels to use. Now, I have different methods that I use with these, and I don't know. I think most of you, let me grab a sketchbook here. Is this the one that it was even in? No, I don't even think this is the one that it was in. Oh, yes, it is. This here is, I'm, I'm experimenting with what we can do on just a normal paper 
with different effects with pastels and this is all pastels then I do a few other things to it as you can imagine so that's going to come up when we do pastels because I'd like to show you how I get these effects it's particularly nice for the winter time when you've got these dreamy trees that are all really sticks because they're they're back to sticks but um, they've got these lovely soft colors in amongst the sticks and I found that that brilliant for pastels between pastels and then funny enough my Tombows and Lyra brushes over the top of the pastel now considering pastels are very grainy you would think that would ruin a felt tip and with some of them it would sorry I'm not even sure in my excitement did I even ship was that on camera my apologies down here anyway you can see the um, different layers I would have thought a felt tip or these acrylic markers over the top of pastels because of the pastels being gritty and dry I thought it would ruin the pen so I added another step in between and that shall remain a state secret until we do it next after Christmas we'll do that and I'll show you what I mean so some of these you can put water with there are other things you can put with it again I won't go into it now I'll tell you all about that when we get to that because some surprising ingredients that you can use um, and other blending methods as well so this is going to be something that I really want to look into because I just love having them I love being the owner of some pastels they look so they're like jewelry love it or like a box of sweets right well I'll need to go buy more now because that's all I've got and that we're at the end of it. I've got a lovely pile of boxes next to me here and a job of checking them all off on the list. But thank you very much for staying with me during this. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll have some times playing with these. Like I said, don't feel the need to go out and buy them all yourself. I just like having the colours, but we'll use them in a nice way and you'll be able to see what you can do with them. You may already have some of these um and then you can maybe find new ways to use them because they're it, there are some fabulous options so yeah with that i will bid you adieu the snow has stopped but it looks like it's going to start again there's still more there to come so it's all good have a lovely rest of day and enjoy the rest of your week and I shall see you again very soon hopefully towards I think Friday I shall very very much try to upload something for you on Friday so I'll see you then bye